Hello, my name is Ben Zandi, and this is a presentation on advances in modeling and simulation of electronics thermal management systems as applied to aerospace electronics, featuring ElectroFlow product. Uh, first, let's go through the outline of the presentation. Uh, we start with the brief overview of the company. Then we talk about the need and the importance of thermal management systems. Uh, then we discuss the role of modeling and simulation. Um, and then uh, we take a look at a couple of traditional modeling simulation approaches, discuss advantages and disadvantages of each. Uh, then we start uh, looking into the features and benefits of ElectroFlow so software and uh, take a a more in-depth look of some of the features of the software using some of the examples and uh, we end with an application example cons consisting of uh, liquid cooled electronics boxes in aircraft rack system. TES International is an engineering software and services company providing solutions in the area of electronics cooling general heat transfer, CFD, stress, and vibrational analysis. The company was established in 1994. TES is an American company headquartered in Troy, Michigan. All TES employees are U.S. citizens. Thermal management is perhaps more important today in aerospace electronic systems than ever before. As system designers, are pressed to improve uh, safety, reliability, performance, passenger comfort, comfort, and energy usage. Some of the contributors are harsh environment, increasing number of heat sensitive electronics components and boxes, high current and high power densities as a result of smaller packaging, and at the same time we are facing ever shrinking component sizes and space allocation. To address these challenges, efficient thermal management systems must be designed that they focus on optimizing the acquisition of heat from various sources and provide clear, effective procedure for management of this heat and rejection to the ambient safely away from heat sensitive components. Neglecting thermal management can have severe economic impacts. Majority of catastrophic failures and reliability issues are caused by the lack of proper thermal design. These include warranty problems as associated costly recalls, product launch delays, bad publicity resulting from poor reliability. All these can cost in the upward of hundreds of millions of dollars. And it could be avoided by timely thermal design that's guided by computer-aided modeling simulations and analysis. With the advances in the computer technologies, modeling and simulation techniques are critical tools in the design, analysis, and the assessment of thermal management systems. Uh, some of the benefits that you can expect by employing thermal modeling and simulation uh, are as follows. You can, uh, it provides a clear and non-invasive look into the system. Uh, you can evaluate multiple design iterations and uh, drastically reduce development cycle time. Uh, it identifies problem areas and bottlenecks and you can answer what if types of questions. For example, you can see what happens if you change the material from copper to aluminum or what happens if you uh, change the trace thickness. It reduces number of prototypes and testing cost and significantly decreases the uh, uh, success rate of physical testing. And one of the important uh, features of modeling simulation is that it gives you a complete picture. Uh, you can obtain thermal information throughout the system and not just a few probe locations. But it's important to keep in mind that models need to be validated at some point. Traditionally, there are two approaches that are commonly used in the commercially available thermal analysis software packages. On one hand, we have the detailed three-dimensional 
computational fluid dynamics and heat transfer approaches. Uh, they can produce high degree of accuracy if used correctly. Uh, they could be time consuming to create models. Uh, sometimes it requires high degree of expertise. Uh, they can be computer resource intensive, especially if your problem is very complex involving multiple systems. Uh, for these cases, it's not practical to use them or they can uh, not be used for what-if studies. On the other hand, we have the simple one-dimensional flow network type of approaches. They are very fast uh, for modeling and simulation. Uh, they are ideal, therefore, for rapid prototyping, not suited for all types of components, and they must be validated, uh, the component models, uh, using test data or detailed analysis. And the big problem is that you don't get any information inside your system, so they're like black boxes. So the user usually uh, find themselves linking software packages with no access to the source code, and that could be a very difficult task. Electroflow is an ideal software for complex electronics cooling problems. In fact, as the degree of complexity of the model increases, uh, the benefits of Electroflow software becomes more evident. The software, software has benefited from almost two decades of uh, utilization in challenging problems in aerospace industry. It has a very fast and stable sol solver, making it possible to solve very difficult, complex problems involving millions of elements in reasonable time. And because of that, that relieves the user from a uh, tedious task of model cleaning and simplification that can result in errors in analysis. Uh, the software has been used globally with, you, with customers in the US, South America, Europe, and Asia. And the word is that it's very intuitive, easy to use, and easy to learn. It has many differentiating and unique features. Now let's discuss some of the uh, features and benefits of Electroflow software. Uh, the first feature I'm going to discuss is the coupled electrical analysis, which basically means that it includes a voltage potential equation to be solved along with other uh, system of equations that uh, is being solved. Uh, the, main, the main benefit is that it accurately and automatically account for self-heating of the traces and therefore avoids the costly over designs. As I said earlier, this is one of the main benefits of the software. It's been in the uh, uh, software since late 90s and uh, we'll talk a lot more about this in some of the examples. Uh, next is the embedded flow network feature which uh, basically gives the user the ability to integrate complex, complex uh, flow network systems into the model. Uh, so it can be used to have liquid cooling, uh, micro channels, cold plates, and any other kind of embedded uh, flow option. It also gives the user the ability to calculate the pressure drop and flow distribution in the system and uh, as we will talk about more outside the system. Uh, the patented radiation solver it gives the user the ability to combine automatic, automatically combine element surfaces into more manageable radiation surfaces. So the radiation mesh is not dictated by the details of the conduction uh, model. The next benefit we're going to talk about is the multi-system modeling. Multi-system modeling is a uh, capability that allows the user to combine existing models of parts into uh, very complex models of systems and uh, racks. Obviously, it's uh, very useful and it significantly reduces modeling and simulation time. The next unique feature is the embedded RC thermal network. 
this feature allows the user to integrate uh, thermal resistive RC type circuits with uh, no limitations on the complexity of these circuits into the model. It can, can be used to uh, add component details so you can uh, look at the internals of a component with, uh, without much computational uh, resources and uh, that can also be used to extend the domain of the boundary condition and have thermal connections to the surroundings and have a more realistic boundary conditions. The next one is the embedded RC electrical network, which is the electrical counterpart of the thermal network. It can be used for modeling electrical circuits which are attached to the model. So this, for example, can be used to uh, model the heat generation inside of a component that heat is a function of uh, maybe a current passing through a circuit and that heat can be applied to the solid. Now let's talk a little bit more about the uh, coupled electrical thermal solution of Electroflow. Uh, thermal analysis of high current and high current density devices require a complete knowledge of the heat generation in the circuitry. Now, just knowing how much heat is dissipated by itself is not enough. We, we need to know how this heat is distributed on the traces and the conductors. Uh, the areas of high heat concentration obviously results in uh, bottlenecks and problem areas. Uh, the way this thing is implemented is the, as I said earlier, voltage field is solved in parallel but coupled with the temperature and pressure and the, the uh, electrical properties are up updated uh, as the temperature uh, progresses and this, as the solution progresses. The resulting uh, voltage field and the current density is used to calculate the Julian heat generation. And uh, the benefit would be that uh, automatically and accurately we account for uh, heat dissipation in the devices, the so-called self-heating effect. And as a result of that, uh, the user doesn't have to try to estimate uh, trace heating, which invariably leads to over-design. Uh, here's the procedure of how this is done in the software uh, interface. First we begin with the geometry. Uh, trace and conductor geometry is either created or imported uh, from CAD and Gerber data. Then there's a pre-processing tool that automatically goes through all the elements and based on electrical resistivity identifies different circuitries and uh, lists them and, uh, and at the same time it will uh, display in different colors uh, in the main window. Uh, there's also a number of error checking tools available for the user to check the circuit and make sure there are no breakages in the circuit and there is a continuity for proper amperage. How this works, let's take a look at a circuit board here. Here we have a six layer board, three load layers and three return layers. The current comes in through the load, ter load terminal block blocks and it goes to the through the vias to all the load layers and then the return current is returned into the uh, through the return terminal blocks and it flows from the vias into the return layers and as a result of this flow of uh, current from uh, through all the circuitry uh, heat is generated in the board. I, actually, this is the only type of heat that exists in this model. Now, this uh, slide shows the voltage field in two of the layers, for example, and uh, once uh, the simulation is completed, uh, the change in the voltage and gradients in the voltage uh, results into generation uh, heat generation, and uh, we get the uh, temperature distribution on the board. Uh, this plot here shows the effect of coupling of 
electrical and thermal solution. The pink solution shows the uncoupled effect and the dark blue one shows uh, the coupled thermoelectrical solution. As this uh, clearly indicates, the two sol solutions are on top of each other, but as the solution progresses, the two diverge. And it's very clearly seen that the coupled solution predicts a higher temperature than the uncoupled one. This is because of the uh, thermal issues as the temperature goes on in, uh, in different parts of the circuit that causes the resistance goes up and high resistance leads to higher heat dissipation and and so on. So you could uh, drastically under predict the temperature by not coupling the two solutions. Now let's talk a little bit about multi-system analysis technique. As I mentioned earlier, uh, this feature allows uh, the user to subdivide a very complex thermal system into manageable subsystems. And the entire system runs uh, in a simultaneous coupled and synchronized fashion at the speed of this uh, slowest component. Uh, Multi-system could mean that you combine existing models of different parts. For example, you can have a models of board that you've analy analyzed earlier and combine them into an electronics box. It could also mean that you are combining different regions in a complex model. And that could be, you can have a model that uh, solids is a region and the air is another region, electrical circuits are different regions and you combine them. As an example of that, uh, let's take a look at this higher power electronics uh, uh, box. So we have the components, the relays and fuses uh, with a lot of conductors and traces in the system. Uh, the image at the bottom shows the circuitry if you hide all of the plastic uh, and you could see what the, uh, where the current could potentially flow. There are two types of heat generation. We have the con component losses and then we also have the self-heating and Julian dissipation due to the current flow. Uh, the problem is solved using the conjugate internal heat transfer conduction, uh, CFD natural convection, and so on. Uh, here, uh, the multi-system analysis appro approach is uh, used. Uh, system one would be the internal solids. That's the conduction and radiation system. The system two is the electrical system which is the voltage field is solved through these circuits. And uh, system three is just the air. Uh, and the CFD is used to calculate the natural convection in the air. And uh, as a result, uh, when the solution is uh, performed, a simulation is performed, you get the temperature, velocity, pressure field anywhere. And uh, if you want to see what's going on in the traces, you can hide everything other than the traces and examine, uh, and examine the uh, temperature in different circuits. Now let's talk a little bit about the variable fidelity uh, uh, approach as combined with the multi-system. Uh, multi-system, as we said earlier, deals with 3D systems that are in thermal contacts. Uh, the variable fidelity goes a step beyond that. It's, uh, it bridges the gap between the speed and accuracy and lets the analyst choose the desired degree of detail to use in a model. So here we can have a combination of different things working uh, together. You can have uh, models, 3D type models, flow network type models are combi all combined into one. Obviously, the advantages are that you apply the detail and more computationally intensive uh, activities only when needed. And uh, you could use this to analyze your model with a realistic boundary condition because you're, uh, you could use the flow network to represent the ambient that the uh, model is in. Uh, so. The variable fidelity analysis approach gives the user the choice to use the right tool for the right job and avoid the unnecessary overhead when it's not necessary. 
Uh, the types of uh, network model that can be used between different systems is uh, simple uh, links or Bernoulli bars. You could use uh, more sophisticated flow bars. It's just uh, uh, links with many nodes, so you could see the gradual change of the temperature in these uh, bars. And as we said earlier, you could combine these with an extended RC thermal network to uh, to have uh, solids in a simple way. And all of these things, there's a direct coupling between the network model and uh, more detailed three-dimensional computational fluid dynamics or heat transfer models. Uh, here is an example that we're looking at a rack with five boxes in it. And each one of the boxes have been analyzed separately and we have uh, electroflow results for each box and somebody asked us to put these things in a rack which is uh, has cooling channels in the trays and uh, and the flow comes in uh, you know and uh, from the inlet channels and goes through all the different trays and uh, goes out from the outlet ones and this model actually has uh, you know a heat exchanger and uh, and a pump and other things that's not shown here but when you run this model in a multi-system fashion, uh, we get the results for everything. All these models run separately. We get the combined solution of each one of the boxes and we at the same time we can see the flow develops in the rack and uh, you can see that uh, there's air entering the system. And at the same time you can see the temperature changes in the cooling channels as it goes uh, in the trays picking up heat from the components. Uh, let's talk about the different ways of coupling in a, uh, for this variable fidelity approach between one-dimensional and three-dimensional systems. Uh, the first one is called a CFD in the loop. This is uh, used when one or more of the flow components are uh, represented using a three-dimensional CFD model when we don't have enough information to, to use a 1D approach. Uh, this could be used in hybrid battery cells or any type of uh, complex, complex flow passages. Uh, as in uh, uh, before, the CFD component will automatically run in a parallel and synchronized uh, fashion and it exchanges all the necessary data uh, between the multiple models automatically. The second type of coupling between 1D and 3D systems is uh, what we call embedded flow bars. Uh, this is used when a segment of the flow network passes uh, through a solid structure, like a heat exchanger or coil plate. Uh, you may want to model these uh, liquid channels using a flow network approach, but uh, the heat transfer between the two needs to be taken care of correctly. Now, uh, to uh, the mapping of the convective uh, heat transfer coefficient can be done in one of uh, many different ways. You could use correlations from textbooks. Uh, you could use CFD results that you ran earlier, and uh, you may want to use heat exchanger data, you know, performance charts and data. And sometimes we have used in the past the test data and libraries. Uh, from the customer's uh, uh, existing uh, test data. Here's an example of the CFD in the loop approach. Here we have a battery cell that's using uh, initially a lumped capacity method, uh, but we may not know what the pressure drop and the heat transfer information is for this. So we could replace the battery uh, cell model with the actual three-dimensional CFD model of it and we run this in a uh, multi-system uh, variable fidelity approach. Uh, here the battery cell is solved using a three-dimensional uh, CFD and the, the rest of the system uses the simple flow network type of approach. Once the analysis is done, the battery cell can be characterized and replaced with a simple, uh, simpler counterpart. Up to now, we 
discuss some of the main features of the software, how it can be used uh, in uh, different aspects of the cooling of aerospace electronics. And uh, now let's take a look at an application example involving some uh, realistic boxes. Uh, here we have an electronics rack that uh, we have two complex uh, boxes that we want to analyze in full detail. And there are a number of other boxes that we don't have a lot of information of, so we just use them, uh, you know, uh, simple model for those. Uh, but the main idea is that the two boxes are liquid cooled and the cooling uh, fluid comes uh, from the electronics uh, heat exchanger. It's pumped into the system and it goes into the two boxes. And uh, if you look at uh, here, uh, in one of these boxes, well, both the boxes, that just shows here the cold plate as the flow passes through uh, the, uh, the boxes and then it goes back into the heat exchanger and cooled. Let's talk a little bit about the details of these two boxes that uh, we, are, uh, we are considering. Uh, they are, uh, the first one is a typical uh, plug-in type of module that uh, uh, has a uh, number of daughter boards and a motherboard. Uh, a system model consists of uh, embedded flow bar feature that uh, goes through the two sidewalls that are cold plate. Uh, we want to know the temperature distribution in the daughter boards and throughout the system actually. Uh, the boards are plugged into the motherboard and the motherboard has uh, 14 layers of copper and we talk more about the details of the motherboard and the two systems are analyzed in parallel using a multi-system analysis approach. Um, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the heat transfer that's occurring in the plug-in modules. Uh, we have the heat that's uh, dissipated in the components on the boards from the component, the heat is transferred through the uh, thermal vias into eight layers in the board, and from there it's uh, spread throughout the board and is conducted to the side walls uh, using uh, you know, wall contact of some sort. So the important param parameters is the contact length, width, and the contact resistance, obviously, because that could put a uh, bottleneck in the in the passage of the heat from the uh, source to the heat sink. Now if you look at the motherboard, motherboard uh, the heat dissipation in the motherboard is all due to self-heating effect of the traces. Uh, there are 14 uh, copper layers modeled, all layers are 4 ounce copper and there is uh, uniform FR4 layers between the coppers and the layers are equally spaced. Uh, the thermal interface between this model and the other one is uh, from the wall contact on the edges of the board and also through the pins uh, of the of the daughter boards and going into the motherboard. So, so those, the both thermal and electrical boundary condition is applied through there. Uh, once you run this model in a synchronized fashion, we can get the temperature throughout the model. You can look at all the different boards, and um, then uh, here this shows the temperature distribution on the cold plate, and you can see the footprint of the boards, and there is liquid embedded flow network in the sidewalls, so picking up the heat as it passes through it. And uh, here we're looking at the you know uh, temperature in one of the daughter boards and uh, of course we can see the temperature or voltage field anywhere in the motherboard so you get a complete result of this model along with all the other models that are running at the same time now another the the other model that exists in this system is a little bit different we have a number of boards and uh, you have a cold plate uh, with number of uh, PCBs and traces and all kinds of conductors and insulator. 
heat generation is uh, as a result of switching of the devices, component losses, and current flow in the traces, uh, and uh, uh, high dissipating components, diodes, and IGBTs are mounted on the cold plate, and flow enters and leaves the cold plate. Now, the component definitions, uh, they are created using variable power dissipation values. Uh, they're a function of temperature and uh, by current square. Now, for that, the function uh, feature is used here. You can define sinusoidal, pinal polynomial, or exponential functions in electroflow. Uh, the models, the, these can be saved in a library. The models, these functions can multiply each other, so you can have a function of time multiplying a function of temperature. So for uh, defining duty cycles and, and uh, ramping up and those types of things. Uh, you could have functions that are periodic. You can have thermostat control a function from a temperature in a different uh, location. And when you run the system, uh, again, the results for this one is you can see, for example, the cold pla plate uh, temperature distribution as the uh, coolant goes through the cold plate, it picks up the heat and you can see uh, temperature anywhere in, and examine uh, across the interfaces. Now the closing remarks is um, electroflow can be a very uh, useful tool to aid in the design of uh, and evaluation of thermal management systems. Uh, the accurate and efficient analysis of different types of uh, thermal system components requires uh, many types of functionalities. You need to have a variety of modeling techniques and you have to have simple, seamless coupling of component models using these different techniques. And you also, you need to have the ability to switch from one model to another uh, with, uh, without any difficulties. And all these need to be done seamlessly behind the scenes with the ease of use. With that, thank you very much. This is the end of the presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email or give me a call. I'll be happy to answer your questions.